So this is going to be a quick introduction to RISC V, which is a different um, assembly language than others that I've used on this channel. I've talked about MIPS and I've talked about ARM. Uh, RISC V is modern and it is open and it is being updated constantly, so there's some advantages of it. Uh, it's a little like MIPS if you've used MIPS. It's nothing like LC3 if, you do, if you've used LC3. Uh, and so what I want to do is walk through my cheat sheet that I've built because uh, this is the way that I learn a new assembly language is I try to build a structure that makes sense to me uh, in terms of encoding that assembly language instruction into 32-bit uh, hex. This to me is... is uh, the easiest way that I know to get a handle on everything the assembly language can do because every bit is either one or zero and that's an option and that is how the machine actually interprets it. And if we're going to build a machine, we've got to know how the machine interprets it. So um, a few of the features of RISC-V that make it really exciting and interesting, it is extensible, uh, which means there's a 32-bit version, there's a 16-bit version, there's a 64-bit version, and you can extend the size of the instruction uh, and therefore the, the scope of the things that the thing can do um, with the same usual caveats that the more compact um, representations tend to be more complicated because you're trying to fit more things into 16 bits. 32 is a nice sort of balance because for a uh, three register format with 32 registers, uh, it takes five bits to represent a register, right? To choose one of the 32 registers that's in the register file. And if you're going to use three registers, that's 5, 10, 15, that's about half of the instruction. The other half is for opcodes and other things. Uh, so that's not a bad balance. MIPS does the same thing. Three five-bit registers in the context of a register format instruction. Um, other formats we'll see as we go, uh, but that's a pretty standard way to do things. And then you can extend to 64 if you want some big massive stuff, larger registers, more of them, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to stick to RISC-V. We don't say RISC-V, we say RISC-V. RISC-V, 32i, this is the... Um, the integer version, the base version of RISC-V at 32 bits. Um, I've added, as you'll see in the title, I've added uh, some extensions. This is the other really cool thing about RISC-V is that you can extend it. You can take the base model, which is the um, integer instructions, and then you can add floating point instructions. You can add multiplication instructions. You can add a bunch of other stuff. Um, and we'll go through some of those different extensions, the sort of standard extensions um, as we go. But for the beginning, we'll look at just the base uh, immediate, uh, sorry, the, the base integer uh, instructions and see what they look like. Uh, so as with most um, assembly languages, and again, this is a good way to explore the common things that assembly languages do in broad terms, right? x86 and ARM and MIPS and AVR. These are sort of common modern day languages, uh, architectures that are in use. RISC-V does make some choices, right? It does some things differently than any of those others. Um, but it all has to do the same kind of stuff, right? There are three fundamental things that an assembly language architecture has to do. It has to be able to do math on numbers, right? Take two numbers, do something to them, and then put the result somewhere. That's basic data processing instructions. Uh, it has to be able to make choices, right? Branching and jumping and stuff like that. And then it has to be able to move information in and out of the register file, uh, get information from memory and move it into the register file so that can be uh, can be operated on. Um, this is how RISC-V works, how ARM works, how MIPS works. x86 is a bit different because it allows you in some circumstances to operate on memory directly, which in the old and old and olden days was fine. Today is a huge no-no because cache and a million things between memory and registers mean that if you want to add a number to a value that's in a register, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we have to think about. Um, sorry, if you want to add a number to a value that's in memory, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But broadly speaking, for reduced instruction set, languages like RISC and ARM and MIPS and everything else, um, those three categories apply. Data processing, making choices, and load store, right? Moving information from memory to registers and back to memory. So we'll start with the basics of the formatting for those. Uh, and then depending on how long this takes, we'll break it up into a few videos where I talk about one of the quirks 
of RISC V uh, that I'm not going to talk about too much right now is the immediate formatting. If you looked at ARM, the immediate formatting was also a quirk. Um, here in RISC V, the immediate formatting is a quirk. And I've got a table here that shows you how to construct the immediate value based on the format that you're using. There's some mess here, <laughs> but we'll get to that as we go. So one of the cool things to begin uh, with RISC V um, that allows it to be extensible is that unlike every other uh, assembly language that we, we look at, really, the opcode is at the bottom of the instruction instead of up at the top. Right? And this is on purpose because that way if you want a 32-bit instruction, here it is. If you want a 15-bit instruction with some, with some futzing around, you just go like this. Foop, and now the opcode is still in bits 0 through 6. And so you don't have to change your architecture to find a new opcode when shorter or longer instructions. It's always at bit 0 to 6. Then we have the destination register in bits 7 through 11. Then we have a function code of some kind. And then we have a source register and then another source register and some other function code. So basically what we've got for the very easiest kind of instruction to understand, the R type or register instructions, where you're just taking two numbers from the register file, doing something to them, and then putting them back in the register file, you need those three registers, right? Destination, one source, and another source. And then you've got these other three fields that say what we're going to do. Opcode says what kind of instruction we have. And then function 7 and function 3, this is just a 3-bit function code and a 7-bit function code. These tell you what you're actually going to do. So let's look at some examples. If we're going to do add or subtract, right? Here is add or subtract. Uh, the opcode for any of these, add or subtract, shift left logical, set less than, set less than, unsigned, exclusive or, shift right logical or, or uh, arithmetic or and, these are sort of all typical ALU instructions. They all have the opcode 01100011. They're all R format. And then function 3 tells us what specific we're doing, What's, what thing we're doing that is the specific kind of data processing instructions. So ALU instructions, data processing instructions, 01100011 is all of these. Um, why you see two options here, we'll talk about in a second, but basically if, the, if these three bits function three here are 000, then we're adding and subtracting. If it's 001 here, then we're shift left logical. If it's 002 here, uh, then we set less than, etc. 002. 010, right? These three bits tell us what uh, functions we can do. Um, there are register variants and immediate variants for each of these. We'll talk about immediates in a different video. Um, but then what I've got on this table is the operation itself, the what it actually means, and an example of what actually happens. So if we were going to do exclusive OR, for example, uh, our opcode would be this. Our function three would be this. That gives us an exclusive or. Our register values would be whatever they are. And then function seven would just be ignored. We don't need those seven bits to specify an exclusive or. And then the table here tells us that the destination register is going to receive whatever value is calculated from one of the sources, exclusive or with the other source. And here I've got this in this table that shows that immediate values or, or immediate versions of this can be done as well. And again, we'll talk about those in another video. Uh, but that's basically how this works. And up at the top here, I've got an example of how you would actually write that in assembly language. This one is add immediate into T0, value of T1 plus 10. So that's an example of the assembly language code for the add immediate instruction. And you can imagine the exclusive or would be exclusive or into register T0, T1, T5, whatever it is, whatever registers you're looking for. So in subsequent videos, we'll look at the programmer model, which includes the register file and memory organization. We'll look at the immediate versions of these ALU operations. We'll look at everything else here. We've got the load store instructions. We've got branch system instructions, and a few other little complications, right? Everything is like this. Some simple stuff and some complicated stuff. But that gives you the basic introduction to what, uh, what RISC-V is going to look like.